What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and I'm just your typical Indian software engineer. In this game dev experiment, we'll go over the process of building a 3D snake game inside of a retro computer. In order to sort of understand how this works, we're going to have to split this video up into three main parts. First, we're going to code the actual snake game using 3JS. Then, we're going to map the game that we code onto a two-dimensional geometric plane. This geometric plane is going to get added effects like vignette to make it look cool. And in the final section, we're going to load this 3D monitor model and map the geometric plane onto this monitor. Cool, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is just create a snake board, basically a reference for us as we look at the snake as it moves to make sure that it is moving in the correct directions. So here's the three-dimensional board. I added some customization here so we can zoom in and zoom out. And also we can customize the size of the board so we can have 6x6, six 8x8, six, eight eight, or all the way up to 12x12 twelve twelve sized board. After we create the board, we obviously have to create the snake. And the snake is going to have a base length that we predetermined and we're basically going to create a box geometry for each part of the snake. So last thing we're going to want to do is actually animate the snake and we're going to do that with the old and the new coordinates of the head of the snake. So if a user presses up then we're going to set the new coordinates to be y plus one. It iterates through all the children of the snake group and it constructs the new coordinates and between the old and new coordinates, we're gonna get a smooth animation. If I start pressing the up arrow, it's gonna go up, left arrow is gonna go left, down or right, and it just works as normal. Now, I also added a little bit of customization here so we can sort of make the snake go faster and maybe change the difficulty of the game if we want to. So I'm gonna pause it here and go to the top right and go to the loop time step. Basically, this is gonna determine how fast the snake is moving. So now if I press down arrow, you're gonna see that it's moving pretty fast. After constructing the basic snake, we have to allow the snake to eat some snacks so that it can grow. And this is what that that function is doing. What we're going to first do is get all of the snake parts and make sure that when we are constructing a snack on the board that it is not intersecting with any of the snake parts and if we find an xy coordinate that does not intersect with the snake body then we can just add that to the game. And of course, if we now have snacks in the game, we also have to make sure that when the head of the snake is basically equal to wherever the snack is, that we extend the snake and that we reset the snack. So now we've added these snacks into the game board. So once the head of the snake reaches the snack, the snake should increase in length by one. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to move the snake here. And as it goes down to the snack, as you can see, it gets extended. Again, it gets extended. And of course, let's just do one more. Okay, cool. So we've got our basic little snake game up and running. For the next step, what we want to do is map our game onto a two-dimensional plane geometry. And that is going to allow us to put the game on top of the retro television. I'm going to create a plane geometry. And now this is where the complex stuff comes in. And that has to do with the shader material. So this shader material takes in a texture and this texture is actually going to contain the snake game itself. So basically I am rendering the snake game onto a texture and I'm going to pass that into the plane geometry so that we can play the game inside of the scene, kind of like a game within a game. So this is what that ends up looking like. As you can see, we've got our plane. I made it all wavy so that we can sort of see that it's two dimensions. And then we've got our snake game running on that. So if I start moving the snake, then you know, we can sort of play this game on this plane geometry. Looking at that two dimensional shape was pretty difficult. So I added a vignette shader, which is just sort of this like blackness around the edges and it makes it a little bit easier on the eyes to look at. So now we can play our snake game. Now let's just fix up this plane so that it looks like it can be a TV screen and not like some sort of sine or cosine wave. So with some updates to the shader code, we now have a 2D plane that looks like it can actually fit on top of a TV screen. It looks sort of like a TV screen. And of course, you can always play the snake game on here. 
and all that's left to do is to find a model from Sketchfab and load it onto this scene so that we can sort of position this on the TV and then we'll finally have our game played on a retro monitor. So by this point, I have created the snake game and completed the hardest part, which was getting it to run on a 2D plane. Now all we got to do is get a monitor that looks kind of retro and put it into our app. So I went to Sketchfab and they have a ton of free resources and this person named James Harness created this monitor and I thought it looked cool. So we're just going to yoink that and put it in our project. Once you download the monitor, you get a zip file and you know you get the scene and the textures. So loading it into a 3JS scene is pretty straightforward. You just have to import the GLTF loader and just pass in where the monitor exists. So now we basically got our 3D game up and running inside of a monitor. So you can see here that you know the monitor is loaded properly. So we can play our game and you know. We got Snake running on a retro computer. I'll leave you guys off with an extended demo of this game. And of course, if you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just leave a like on this video and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.